Hello, Henry from Belgium here. Today, a video about LEGO set 6278, Enchanted Island from 1994. I have a complete set with box, manual, and all parts. It has some really cool pieces and minifigs, and I'll show you all of them. And of course, I'm going to build the set. First, some background information. The set has the theme, pirates, and the sub-theme, islanders. That sub-theme consists of six different sets, of which this enchanted island is the largest, with 393 parts and seven minifigs. In 2001, LEGO re-released this set with set number 6292. It's a collector's item and loved by many LEGO fans from all over the world. It had been on my wish list for a while to find this set. Since I only collect sets with box and manual, it was quite difficult to find a copy in a decent condition. When something is rare, sellers think they can ask any price, with the result that the internet is full of advertisements with the craziest asking prices. I like to have nice sets in my collection, but not at any price. So with such valuable sets, I am satisfied with a box in a slightly less good condition. As you can see, this outer box is somewhat damaged. One side is missing, and there is some transparent tape here and there. But most of the cardboard is still present, and so is the plastic foil. What I find important about a box is that the images of the alternative constructions are still clearly visible, and that's the case here. The box is very inviting, beautiful artwork in the pirate theme. It gives a bit of an overwhelming feeling, but I like it. And above all, it is also very colorful. I also have the inlay complete with the extra cardboard, and it is a light purple one. I find this special, and it's something I have never seen before. The only thing missing here is the plastic blister. You can see it in this photo. That piece of plastic is almost always thrown away immediately after opening the box, so it's very hard to find in almost any set. When I found and checked the set, I noticed that some small parts were missing. But in the end, I was able to complete everything. Including the minifigs, there are over 400 parts. And when you see everything on the table here, it seems to me that there are many more. I see lots of minifigs, ready-made pieces, a lot of accessories, and these wall pieces are also nice. They have a print and no stickers. So a lot of parts and pieces, but I don't actually see that many basic bricks. I have the feeling that it's a bit of everything thrown together. So I'm curious to see how I'll do with building the set and what the end result will be. This will be the first time that I will actually build it and that I will see everything together. The manual still looks good after 30 years. Beautifully designed with the same artwork of the box and it adds to the overall experience. The drawings are colorful and large. I like it that the manual has a good format in book form. Very handy. There are chapters per part that you need to build. It's very extensive, and I do see that it's not always indicated which parts are added at each step. So I will have to be careful not to skip any steps. It consists of 32 pages. So this is not a set that you can put together in no instant. And before you can actually start with the set, there are some other things to build first. On the first five pages, you will see how to build the minifigs, crocodile, palm trees, and boats. And here I even see a kind of stretcher. That is some kind of throne on which the king must sit and be carried around. The 
There are no fewer than seven minifigs in this set, including five islanders and two pirates. So the battle is a bit uneven, but it's always a good marketing trick to put enemies in a specific set. This is my first set with the islanders, and now that I see them in real life, I think the minifigs are well developed. Very nice detailing with even prints on the trousers, and this is something I don't see often in sets from that period. The black parts on the head are not headgear, but are described as a hairpiece. And the king named Kahuka, with the impressive mask, is of course the eye-catcher in this group. Nice detail. Even though his face is almost completely covered by the mask, he has also a painted head. Also nice, and not that common, is the fact that there is a female minifigure with a plume. She is described on Bricklink as Islander, female with quiver, so she actually belongs to the group of male Islander fighters, and is not described as a queen or princess as you would expect. The two pirates are classic as we know them from many pirate sets, but that actually only applies to the pirate, with the red and white stripes on the torso. The other figure is rarer and only appears in one other set. You would think it's the well-known Captain Redbeard, and that turns out to be correct. But it's a variation on that figure. The facial hair and torso are different, which makes it more unique. To me, it looks more like a brown mustache and beard. But on Bricklink, this is described as dark red. Nice that I now also have two different captains in my collection. In addition to the seven minifigs, there are three animals in the set. An alligator whose mouth and tail can be moved, a monkey, and the well-known colored parrot. I also like the classic palm trees in these old sets. I saw more recent designs that consist of more modern and a sort of technic parts, but I don't like that. For me, this is the only way you can build palm trees. Old school. Although there are 10 brown connectors with which you can make two trees of five connectors each. According to the manual, you are supposed to build a large tree consisting of six connectors and a smaller one with four connectors. And the nice thing about the small tree is that the leaves are also smaller in size. I have never seen this size of leaves before. Nice. The next step is building the two boats. The designers could easily provide a simple canoe and brown sloop, but they still added something extra, and I find that very positive. They each have a nice sail and extra accessories. The canoe also has nice stickers on the side. A nice detail is that both masts are mounted on a turntable 2x2 plate, and can therefore rotate in the direction of the wind. The sails are made of fabric, and I still find that a little nicer than plastic. A major disadvantage is that they quickly become dirty, or the holes tear. You can see that clearly with these old sails. Since the boats are two beautiful eye catchers, I bought them in a better condition on Bricklink as a replacement. They are also original parts from the 90s and were quite expensive, but I thought it was worth the purchase because I will use the set as a display piece. This is what I already have done, and now the big work can begin, building the island. I have two base plates for that, one of which has a structure in different heights and additional prints, and I think that's special. The base plate is described as light gray base plate, raised 32 by 32 canyon with blue and yellow stream pattern. This specific base plate only appears in one other set, Pirate's Perilous Pitfall from 1997, which is also a fairly rare set. With these types of base plates, it is important that there is no damage to the studs or plastic structure. But if that is the case, there isn't much you can do about it. But if you have a pristine copy like mine, you know that you have a valuable part in your hands. On Bricklink, there are sellers who charge up to 90 euros for just this plate. Whether they sell it at that price is another matter, of course. 
but 35 euros for a nice copy doesn't seem unrealistic to me. The second base plate is a 32 by 32 base plate with a seven stud road curve and river pattern. And although you would suspect that this could appear in multiple sets, it is a unique base plate and only appears in this set. The only thing in my collection that comes close is the one in my Rocky River Retreat set from 1993. But I like this one better because it is a bent river. The base plate is specially designed so that it fits nicely with this raised base plate. And if you would like, you can buy two extra separate base plates and make a large square, creating a round river. They get a 10 out of 10 from me, and these alone are a nice addition to my collection. I still have all these parts left to build the actual island, and as you can see there are quite a lot. It's good that the manual splits the building of the island into two separate chapters. I can build the construction on each base plate separately, and then put the two together at the end. This way, I have a good overview of what I'm doing. The first fun play feature is the cave in which a treasure is hidden. This treasure consists of real coins, and not yellow round plates one by one, like in the older sets. There are eight coins. The numbers on them vary from 10 to 40. With some extra bricks and leaves, the hidden cave takes shape, and it looks nice. Although I think the finish could be a bit better and extra playability could be provided, here is an opening that will ultimately not be finished, and also has no function whatsoever. With other sizes of plates, this hole could have been closed, or made larger so you could have turned it into a kind of dungeon. Or they could have built the plates in another way, so that there is an extra entrance to the treasure, and then cover it with a plate to hide it. So the base has been built, and I will build a first and second floor on it. There are also some nice extras to build in between, such as a table with a gold cup, a drum machine and ladders. The building experience is quite fun. It's a combination of ready-made pieces, basic bricks, and various plants. It reminds me a bit of the Forestman sets, but with some jungle flavor. At the top, there is also a play element where you can tilt the leaves on the roof so that the mini figs can hide behind them. This is the complete end result of the first base plate, and it looks nice. I often comment that there are no ladders or stairs in a set, but that is clearly not the case here, so very positive. The color palette is well chosen, and I am glad that the designers did not work with brown stones, rock walls, or different shades of grey, as you will find in the Dragon Knights and Ninja series, for example. It looks really good and makes me feel happy. When it comes to finishing, there are two things that seem a bit unfortunate for me. As mentioned, the hole that can still be seen here, but also the finish at the very top. I find the choice of the two round plates a bit strange, and there is clearly still a height difference that could easily be eliminated by either providing another palm leaf, or by simply placing a one by two plate. Furthermore, it would have been nice if there had been extra cladding or connection points for weapons or other elements on the inside. But I don't want to be too critical, because the set already contains a lot of nice details. I have these parts left to build the second part of the island, and there are still some nice elements to build. A tower to which the suspension bridge will be attached, and an imposing statue. In between, I will also build a cooking fire complete with flame, pot, and contents. The experience is fun, but I enjoy building the statue the most. 
It's puzzling with the right bricks in different sizes and shapes, and I like that. It has a cool finish and details. The head can rotate completely. And it also contains a very nice play feature. It could be a prison, but from what I see in the image on the manual, it looks more like a secret hideout for one of the islanders. The tower does not contain many basic bricks, but mainly ready-made pieces. Its main function is to support the suspension bridge, and it gives me an unfinished feeling. I think the interior decoration is a bit sober, and I find it a strange choice to hang the weapons and shield on the outside, and not spread them over the two floors at the inside. The tower is also a bit narrow compared to the space left on the base plate. What's positive is that there is an extra play function at the top with the leaves under which the minifigs can hide. The finish is better here, especially the extra cow horns give a nice effect. But here too, I think an extra plate could be added to make it completely even. I like the choice of the red parts, and of course the two ladders are a serious added value. The base plates can simply be connected to each other with a few bricks and the bridge. That's useful so that you can easily store the set or get it ready to play again. By placing the bridge on it, I can show you the last play feature of this set. By pulling this pin away, the bridge tilts and the minifig falls down. The only thing that bothers me a little bit about the design is that the bridge does not actually hang over the water, but over a grassy area. By placing the boats on it, and the minifigures, you can now see the full result. It looks good, there is a lot to do, and it has very nice colors that go well together. I think it's a beautiful display piece, and this set certainly deserves a nice place in my collection. Feel free to comment below this video, and don't forget to subscribe, it's free. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.